Welcome, everyone. It's great to see you, as always. This morning's class is about shifting our perspective in order to get into some pretty interesting poses, but shifting the, the perspective from setting a goal or an aim of getting to a certain pose, because we definitely have some poses we're going to do, and shifting that from the pose to actually the process and what occurs when we get into the pose or when we attempt to get into the pose. So it's not going to be about the pose. It's going to be about the journey of getting there. And specifically, we're going to be looking at poses where we have that funny grip that makes us able to, I'm ice cold here, but <laughs> makes us able to touch our hand to our foot. And you might look at that and go, oh god, I think I'm in the wrong room, or I, I took the wrong class, <laughs> right? But when you actually do all the movements to get into that position, or to even possibly get near that position, or use a strap <laughs> for that position, it's a whole um, opening process, not only in the shoulders and the full range of motion of the shoulders, but also in the chest and the fronts of the thighs. So it'll be a very interesting experience. And I hope we can get into that uh, juicy process of opening and really let that be our aim, not the pose. So let's get started with that. Take a nice, quiet seat. Close your eyes and tune into your breath. And in this way, our practice is no, no longer about achieving, but it's about being. It's about being present. In the same way that we're present for family, for relationship. When we're eating or when we're driving, that heightened awareness Come to that place inside, fold the palms together in front of the heart, and we'll chant the sound of Om together three times. Full deep breath in. Om. Gently release the hands and open the eyes. Beautiful. We're going to start out on our right side doing a very gradual shoulder opener. <clears throat> so it'll look like this really briefly, palms together on the floor, head on the ground. You're going to take your arm, your left arm, <clears throat> above your head. Look at your hand. Take it behind you. Bring it back up and around. Keep looking at the hand and together. And we'll repeat that three times on each side. So roll on your right side, heads to the front. Palms out perpendicular to your body. <clears throat> Head resting on the floor. <clears throat> knees at a, <clears throat> excuse me, knees at a 90 degree angle to your body. Excellent. From here, lift on the inhale. Lift the left arm above your head toward the top of the mat. And take it around and back like you're going to twist over to the left. That's it. Then looking at your hand, bring it back up toward the head of your mat. Look at your hand and bring it back around, palms together. That's one. Again, lift up, stretch it back. Nice. And lift it up above your head. Look at it and bring the palms together. It's full range of motion in the shoulder, very gentle. Inhale again, lift up, bring it back and around. Mm -hmm. 
I hear some groans already, that's great. And then up <laughs> toward the top of the mat and back together. And then roll over onto your left side to repeat for the right arm. <clears throat> Palms together. Knees at a 90 degree angle, head resting, inhale, lift the arm up, touch the sky above your head, reach it back and around, twist, and then back up toward the top of the mat. There you go, and palms together. Again, inhale, lift the arm above your head, look at your hand, take it back and around. The looking is key, it gets your neck involved. Exhale, bring the arm back around, I think I lost count, so we'll do one more. Inhale, lift up, reach, twist, and look at the hand, bring it up, back, and together. Fantastic. And now from here, roll up into a seated position, sit on your heels. <clears throat> and just simple shoulder rolls going from back, up, and front. We'll do five of these. One two, three, four, and five. And now we'll go up and back. One, two, got some crunchies, three, <laughs> four, and five. Very nice. Okay, from here, sit on your heels. So you're gonna uh, tuck the toes under, sit on the heels, and inhale the arms halfway up and exhale, release them down. So this is just a little like wing flying. Up and down. And up, not even going above the head yet. Just that gradual. Up and down. There you go. One more time, up and down. And then from here, take yourself forward into Uttanasana. Just step forward and let the head release Uttanasana. And allow your shoulders actually to relax. So the arms are going to come out of the sockets and hang. Let your jaw relax as well. Fingertips on the floor, but arms relaxed. Head and neck, release. Excellent. Feet parallel. And then place the hands on the hips. Take the shoulders back. Squeeze now the upper back. So it's the opposite. The arms are plugging into the sockets. Long, strong legs. Inhale, stand. That's it. From here, inhale, halfway up with the arms. Exhale and release. Okay, from here, inhale, make tiger claws. Uh-huh. And then exhale, round the back on purpose. Round the back and unplug your arm bones. Unpack the arm joints. Yeah, round the back. Make the scapula wrap around the back. And then inhale, plug the arms in the socket. Open the chest. Lift the chin. Exhale, round the back. Mm-hmm. Inhale, open. Mm -hmm. So we let the shoulder take the full range of motion. Exhale, round. Yeah, we don't impose one way or the other. We're giving it the full range. That's it. Full experience. Exhale. Inhale, open. There you go. And exhale. That's it. One more time going to where we generally prefer to be when we're walking around and talking to people. Well, not with the claws, but <laughs> the shoulders, like if you take your arms down. Yeah, this is how we'd like to be when we're available and present to people around us, not like that. Okay? And then from here, inhale, take your arms all the way up and feel as though, well, feel what it feels like after doing that warm-up. It should be more cloud-like, hopefully. Cloud-like and light. Exhale, release. Inhale again, cloud-like. Exhale, follow your breath. Beautiful. Inhale, reach up. Mm -hmm. Exhale. Keep the chest open for these. Inhale. And exhale. Beautiful. One more time. Inhale. This time, strong legs. Exhale, bow forward, touch the earth. 
Mm -hmm. Inhale, look up, lengthen the spine. Mm -hmm. And exhale, fold. Inhale, step your right foot back to a long lunge. Place the knee on the floor. Take the left arm. Inhale, stretch it forward. This is going to look familiar. Look at your hand and take it back. That's it. Inhale again, reach up. And exhale, place the arm down. Let's do the right. Right arm up. Check it out as you're reaching it back. And exhale all the way back down. Left side again. Inhale, reach up. And exhale up and over. Look at your hands so your neck and head get involved. Right arm up and back. And exhale, hand down. Beautifully done. Reach the back knee off the floor. Step it forward, left foot back. Excellent. Release the left knee down. Now start with the right arm. Inhale, stretch it forward, reach it up. Take it back and up, forward and down. Use your eyes. Inhale, left arm up and back. Exhale, use your eyes to look at the fingers. Right arm up and back. Exhale and down. Left arm up and back. Exhale and release. Place both hands firmly on the floor. Lift the back knee up. Exhale, push back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, down dog. So this is the first weight-bearing pose that we're attempting. And after all that opening, just get more present in your own shoulders. Feel if this dog is particularly more delicious than usual right off the bat. Anyone? <laughs> it's definitely more delicious for me. I hope it is for you. Beautiful. Inhale forward to plank pose. Mm. Exhale your knees to the floor. Look forward. Bend the elbows. Take the chest and chin down to the floor. Inhale. Slide forward for cobra pose. Here you want to strengthen the upper back. Just a baby cobra. Mm -hmm. Strengthen the upper back here. Good. Then come up a little bit higher. Then exhale. Downward facing dog. Walk your feet forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale, stretch the arms up, touch the sky. And exhale, palms back in front of the heart. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, strong legs bow forward. Inhale, look up. Exhale, step back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, down dog. Inhale, plank pose. Exhale, knees to the floor, chest and chin forward, but up in the air. Inhale, slide forward, point the feet. Cobra, now we'll come more to a half cobra. Mm -hmm. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana, down dog. Beautifully done. On your next inhalation, step your right foot forward, Virabhadrasana 2. Windmill the arms up. Bend the front knee all the way to a square. Exhale, take the left arm down the thigh. Bring the right arm over the ear. Reverse warrior, goddess warrior. Bend the front knee more. Exhale from here. Bring the right forearm down to the thigh for Parsvakonasana variation. Left arm over the ear. Now keep the legs exactly as they are. Inhale back up to Virabhadrasana 2. Exhale, slide the left arm down, right arm over the ear. Exhale, right hand to the floor this time, or stay with the modification, left arm over the ear, and stay here for a little moment. Strengthen the legs and lengthen the legs. So there's strength, you're pulling in, but you're also lengthening. Stretch the top arm. Exhale. 
Exhale, left hand to the floor. Step back, downward facing dog. Hmm. Three breaths here. And then left foot forward on your inhalation, Virabhadrasana two, windmill up. Mm -hmm. Look over the left shoulder. Exhale, right arm down, left arm over the ear, Vira two, reverse. Bend your front knee more. That's it. Exhale, left forearm to the thigh, right arm over the ear, stretch, modified Parsvakonasana. Beautiful. Keep your legs exactly as they are. Inhale to Virabhadrasana two. And exhale, reverse it. Go that way. Yeah, there you go. Beautifully done. Left hand all the way to the floor. We'll hold this last Parsvakonasana for a moment. And practice now taking the wrist on the right hand forward of your face, forward of your face, and retract the arm bone into the socket. So pack the joint. Then stretch fully, push into that hand like you're trying to touch the wall in front of you. Yes. Exhale, hands to the floor, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Now to get to all the poses that we want to attempt, I'm not going to say do, I'm going to say attempt, we have to move pretty quickly uh, into the warm-up phases for those poses. Not a lot of standing poses today. So with that in mind, turn on to the outer edge of the right foot, right hand, Vashi Stasana. So you're gonna turn and be strong on the right arm, left hand on the hip, lift the hips up. Mm -hmm. Exhale, downward facing dog. Left side, turn on to the outer edge of the left foot, stack the feet, <clears throat> stack the feet. Left hand underneath, right hand on the hip, and hold. Right hand down. Okay, this time step your left foot halfway up your mat, turning it out to a 90 degree angle. Go, roll on to the right edge of the foot. Okay, left hand on the hip. And now take your top arm and bring it forward perpendicular, just like we were on our sides, and shrug the armpit up toward the ear. That's it, so you're lengthening your whole left side. Then pack the arm joint into the socket, open up and curl back. Perfect, left hand down. Second side, step back. Okay, here we go. Right foot halfway up the mat, toes turn out, Roll to your left outer edge of foot. Right hand on the hip to begin, but then take the right arm perpendicular to your body. That's it. And shrug the armpit up toward the ear so your whole right side gets longer. With a slight bend in the right elbow, suck the armpit back. Now take the arm up and stretch it back. Beautiful, downward facing dog. Okay, sit on the knees for a moment, just watch. So explain myself a little bit more fully. All right, when we pack the arm joint, or we say the shoulder joint, and we pack it in or we integrate it, it's important not to keep the arm straight when you're doing that, because the bicep tendon gets a little taut and it hooks in weird ways over the bicipital groove. So you wanna bend the elbow slightly so it gets slack. And then when we start to integrate, there is no like funkiness. Does that make sense? It's not gonna hook. However, you have to fixate the bend. So you soften it, fixate the bend, and then move. So you're not doing this, right? You're not letting the elbow bend past that initial softness. Then fixate the elbow, pack the joint. Okay, that's going to be so killer and so key to the process of getting into these poses. That's why I'm getting into it. So here's our next move. Down dog. You're going to go here. 
okay? Side of the body will get longer, bend the elbow, fixate it, plug in, then you can straighten it. Once it's plugged in, you can straighten it. Take it anywhere you want. You can go here, or you can go back, or you can really go, right? And we're gonna keep progressing on this, so go to dog pose. Let's give that a try. I wanna watch you this time. So left foot halfway up the mat, turn the foot out, roll to the outer edge of the right foot. There you are. Now, arm perpendicular, just like when we were on our side. Make your armpit lift up towards your ear, bend the elbow, but fixate the joint. That's it. Then pack the joint, suck the armpit back. Perfectly, perfectly done. Then once the joint is packed, you can straighten the arm. Now stretch it either above the head or you can experiment with taking it back behind you. Be strong through the inner edge of the right foot. Yes. And exhale, down dog. That should feel pretty yummy, I hope. Okay, right foot forward, turn it out. Roll onto the outer edge of the left foot. Okay, keep the hips lifted. Now, right arm, you're gonna suck the armpit up toward the ear, bend the elbow slightly, and now pack the joint so the armpit hollows. Okay, then you can straighten the arm Take it up above your head. You can stretch it back behind you. Be free and, and sort of expressive here. A little expressive. Nice. Excellent. And down dog. This is now going to morph into wild thing. Chamat Karasana. In Sanskrit, that means the, the rapturous taste because it's just rapturous. So you want to make it that way. Even if you have to have your left foot forward, we're going to start with our left foot forward halfway up the mat. Turn the foot out. Roll onto the outer edge of the right foot. Okay, so you can stay with your left foot here if you need to. You can make it rapturous from here. If not, take your left arm, slight bend in the elbow. Side body reaches up toward the armpit. Now fixate the joint, plug it in. Straighten the arm to take it above your head. Now dip the left foot behind you, optional. Keep your hips up and stretch into a back bend. Stretch back. Right leg stays straight if you're really into it. Yeah. And exhale. That was delicious. Left hand down. Doggy. We got some giggles out of that one. That's how it should be. All right, right foot, halfway up your mat. Turn the foot out. Roll onto the outer edge of the left foot. Okay, here we go. Right arm is slightly bent. Armpit toward the ear. Hollow the pit. Then straighten the arm. Take it above your head. And if you'd like to, right foot behind. Push into the right foot. Curl into the upper back. Take your pelvis to the sky. Reach back. Left leg straight. Yeah, left arm straight too. Beautiful. I see everyone's faces. <laughs> Good, and exhale. Left hand down. Well done. Stretch back. Walk your feet forward. Exhale. Uttanasana. Hands on the hips. Squeeze the upper back. Inhale and rise up. All right. I want to get an inversion in. I know the walls are sometimes challenging, but we're going to go over to a wall. So bring your mats over. We can. Um, Actually, use mine if someone doesn't want to bring their mat over. So we can get three people right here on this mat, or two. Okay. Excellent. 
first pose is handstand. First of the inversions, I should say, is handstand. Okay, the, um, what we're gonna do is turn our hands out from the shoulder joint. So we're not just gonna go like this, look really quick, one, two, three. We're actually gonna go, so the whole arm turns out. Then you're gonna look down at your hands, and if you have a mirror, if you guys are at home and you have a mirror and you can see yourself, we can actually be each other's mirror in this room. But if you look, my middle fingers point straight down. Can you guys see that? How my middle fingers point straight down? And some might go out, some might go in, but mine go straight down, but we're all different. It's kind of interesting. When we go to anatomical neutral, we're all gonna be a little different there. So you can kind of take a peek at each other and look, or if you're at home, like go over to a mirror, check yourself out, okay? And then what happens is when you turn your hands over, that's where you want your middle fingers to be pointing. In my case, straight ahead. In your case, could be out or in. Does that make sense? Then take it a little bit fractionally narrower than you might be used to, and then that's your handstand, okay? So my middle fingers are more forward. And what I have found as I've done this is not only do I feel more badass as I'm going up, I feel more strong <laughs> as I'm going up, but I can hold it longer. And I have less wrist discomfort, and it warms me up really nicely for those back bends we're talking about. Does that make sense? It may or may not work for you, I'm offering it, okay? Because it was helpful for my wrist, very helpful. <coughs> kick up to handstand. If you're um, not able to kick up yet, even just doing five hops attempts is good because that's part of the process. Mm -hmm. Five hops to try to get up. I'm okay with that. I'm okay if you don't get up. Look at that. And those in this room, if you want to um, take a peek at each other and be each other's mirror, since we don't have a mirror, feel free to enlist each other's assistance. Squeeze your arms straight. There you go. That's it. Looks like you could go a little narrower, a little bit narrower. You could go. You have to come down, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Just slightly and see if it makes a difference. How are these feeling? Do you like the grip? You do, you got a thumbs up over here. I'm calling it a grip, but it's a hand placement. How do you like it? <laughs> All right, release when you're ready. Stay near the wall. Okay, the next pose we're gonna do is Pincha Mayurasana. Quick review, I know you've probably seen me do this before, but quick review. Bring your elbows slightly narrower than shoulder width apart, then widen to catch the flesh. All right, so from here, I'll just take my feet apart so you can see. See that? Okay. <laughs> Normally, your feet are together. Thank you very much. All right, so it's here. Look up. And then again, pack the joints right there. Now the elbows are bent. Then from there, you're going to come up to down dog. Nothing changes as you come up, meaning you don't round your back at that point. This is dangerous, kicking up when you're unintegrated, okay? So once you're integrated, walk, 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 walk. Up you go. Here we are. Super straight legs to come up. Happiness, <laughs> right here. Okay, so armpits go back. Oh, chest forward, that's so good. It's just good stuff all around. And guess what, if you don't get all the way up, no big deal, you're hanging out here and you're integrating and you're possibly going up into dog pose while you're integrating, and that is your pose. That's your journey. 
for today, working slowly toward this nebulous aim of Pinchamayurasana, but get into how it feels to soften and to integrate first. Go for it. Prego. Block it. Block usage is fine, yes. Block usage, fine. So go shoulder width apart. Shoulder width a little narrower, a little wider. And you want a sticky mat to really, to really get the... Elbows look a little wide. All right, when you're ready, release down. And stay at the wall, but do get a blanket. So meaning keep your mat at the wall, but grab a blanket. And you guys can stay with me here, just grab a blanket. So you'll set up with your blanket. like so. And this pose is uh, affectionately named Ninja Death Pose. <laughs> um, <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay. It's called Ninja Death Pose. Um, really, it was named in a yoga class in New York City by a random person. It's not like it has an official name, but it's kind of uh, official in my book. But this is to stretch the quads and the front of the hips so that when we bend backwards, we're really warm. Now, you're going to slide your right knee all the way to the wall with the foot up the wall, left foot forward. But then, you're going to scooch your knee away from the wall about six inches so it's not so deep to start because we're going to do this pose twice first away from the wall, then we'll move the knee toward the wall. So go ahead and set up like this and then we'll get started. And you guys can come next to me if you want. Yeah. Yeah, say hello to your quads. Right about now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're ready. All right, I love it. Now from here, place the hands up on the thigh, up on the knee. And do allow your pelvis to come forward like an offering. Bring your pelvis forward. Pelvis forward. So you don't want to be back here yet. That's a different kind of pose. We're in this one. Letting the pelvis actually not sink, but move forward. Yeah. That's it. Then let's take it back. You'll step your left foot in so that now your right foot is actually in Virasana pose. Someone said, oh no. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> okay. Now your back, some of you can actually put your back against the wall here depending on the flexion that you have in your knee. If you don't have a lot of flexion in the knee, it ain't going to happen. So you're going to be more forward. Okay, but if you can, go all the way back, get the stretch. Remember that the second time we do this pose, it'll be more intense. This is the warm-up. Excellent. Step forward with the left foot, hands on the ground. And now, lift up and take your arms up. This should really get interesting in the right thigh. Head back. <laughs> There's the ninja death sounds I was looking for. Beautiful. Hands to the floor. And let's switch sides. So left knee goes to the wall to start, right foot forward. And then once you're balanced, scooch away from the wall deliberately. We're deliberately moving our left knee away from the wall so it's not as severe to begin with. Then hands up onto the, the thigh. The thigh. Pelvis is coming in, coming in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is like kind of pulling away from the experience is when your hips come away. This is, 
Yep, I'm in it. I'm in the ninja death zone. Excellent. From here, step your right foot back so you can come more to a virasana foot on the left side. If you feel any kind of boniness on the metatarsals of your left foot, you can always smush a sock or something behind there. Definitely drawing your tailbone down and your pubic bone up will create some interesting sensations in the front of the left thigh. And right foot forward. Lunge again, pelvis into it, arms up. And some of you might even be able to touch the wall behind you. Just keep moving your pelvis forward. Exhale, hands to the floor. Ah, and switch. <laughs> all right. So right knee all the way back this time. Right knee all the way back. OK, now for fun, bring your elbows down. Now if the elbow down thing ain't happening, stay up on the hands. OK, it's totally acceptable. Hands in place, up onto the knee. Now breathing at this stage would be a good idea. <laughs> breathing a lot. Pelvis forward. <laughs> That's it. Then push your hips back. This will be the full virasana now on the right side. Hips back. Hello. Now, right hand on your heel for this one. Right hand on the heel. Push the heel down to root the bones of the leg into the earth. Then take your pubic bone up toward your navel. Hello. <laughs> Smiling definitely helps. I'm serious. Yeah, like gritting your teeth and, and you know, scrunching your eyebrows doesn't make it easier. <laughs> All right. OK, last one in this sequence. We're going to take the left foot forward. OK, pelvis like totally softening and getting into it. Ready? Chest lifts up like there's a geyser coming right out of your chest, like straight up to the sky. Big lift. And then take your arms up. Now, some of you. If you look back and see where your foot is for a second, some of you might be able to bend the elbows and touch your hands to your foot. Not easy to talk and do that at the same time. <laughs> or not, right? Good, and then release, and we'll do our last side of this ninja death sequence. <laughs> OK, left knee back. I always do this one with the group because I feel like I need to empathize. You know, like I could very easily hold you too long, but if I do it, then I know that I'm not torturing you. All right, so <laughs> let's bring the elbows down first. Excellent. Hands on either side. Up onto the knee. Make sure your foot is not sickled in so the toes aren't looking like, can you guys see my toes? They're not looking like that, but they're out. All right. And then knees, hand on the knee. Pelvis totally getting into it. That's it. 
and now stretch back. So now you take your pelvis out of it, step your right foot in, Ooh. left hand onto the heel, push the heel down so the bones of the shin go into the earth. Now pubic bone up toward the navel, butt tucks under and smile. Happy face. <laughs> Good. <laughs> if you forget about smiling for a second, it goes to a grimace. <laughs> All right, good. Right foot forward. Now we attempt, this is actually a variation of Eka Pararaja Kapotasana, but we won't, we won't say that. <laughs> Pelvis forward, lift your arms up. See if the wall's there for you, first of all. Pelvis way forward. If you get any lower back weirdness, you guys, put the hands back on the knees, puff the waistline back, puff the midsection back, and then attempt to do it again. And then see if the foot is there for you. And exhale, hands down. All right, hello. And then just to kind of balance it out, sit in Vajrasana for a moment. So of course I thought of that afterwards, that you might have had some lower back crunchiness. I thought of it after, not during. But um, when that happens, or if, I should say if, if that happens, it's usually because we're jutting our ribs forward quite a bit, instead of stabilizing our midsection back, and then geyser chesting, I call it geyser chest, lifting the chest up, taking the back bend in the chest rather than in this really vulnerable part. Okay, so anytime you need to, when we're back bending here, hands up on the knee or wherever you can get, stabilize this part back, then open. Okay? All right. We are done with the wall. Let's bring our mats back, make the journey. Here's the next pose we'll do. Watch closely. It's a variation of Pincha Mayurasana without going upside down, totally upside down. So we soften, down dog. Lift the left leg. Slowly reach up, grab your foot. <laughs> right there. Opposite arm, opposite leg. Makes it easier to balance. <laughs> Let's try. Okay, so pincha. <laughs> Dog pose. Okay, shift your weight into your left arm. Release your right hand out to the side like a little buttress, right fingertips on the floor. Okay, right leg, or no, left leg, yeah. Left leg lifts so that you're on your right foot and your left elbow, and then reach with your right hand and see if your foot is there for you. If it's not, well, how interesting, how interesting. I recommend going slowly. <laughs> Did you notice how painfully slow I was? You're like, God, oh, when is she going to get into the pose? <laughs> if you go too quickly, you usually don't have it. <laughs> 
If this is your first time ever doing this pose, expect to not succeed. <laughs> Seriously. Expect to just enjoy. In fact, always enjoy. It's, yeah. All right, let's do the second side. So, shift the weight into the right arm. Lift the right leg. So you're on this diagonal. Then left hand comes out to the side like a little buttress on fingertips. I recommend while you still have your left hand down, lifting your right knee as high as you can so that that foot is there for you. Then look at a spot on your mat. Take the left hand back. And go for it. <laughs> While the left hand is still touching, that's when you want to really work the right knee up, right foot up. Awesome. Yeah. Expect to have it not be pretty. Way to go. <laughs> All right, and release. Nice. Derek, awesome. OK, so from here, take your hands back behind you. Geyser chest. So think of a geyser coming right out of the heart up to the sky, and then throw the heads of the arm bones back, shoulders back. Keep the chest this lifted, arms strong. Now take your hips up. Purvottanasana. Shift your hips forward and back a few times. Don't go crazy with that, just little gentle movements. And exhale, softly lower the hips. Lift the chin, come up. Ooh, that's good. Okay, now from here we're going to do one-armed Purvottanasana waves. That's what I call them, waves. And the hand's going to turn out. We're going to get that fixation in the bent elbow thing again before we go up. So it's armpit up, armpit back, then the arm straightens. Now hips go up, and I curl away from my standing arm and back down and repeat to the other side. So, and we're going to do this like it's going to get into a rhythm. Whoa. <laughs> I almost fell over. Whee. OK. Ah. <laughs> Try it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you go really slow and methodical, you can still come down feeling like I just did. Yeah, it makes you smile. Take your time. So set up first. Yeah, Derek's got it here. Set up first so you have that fixated elbow. You plug the arm bone in, then get yourself going. And after a while, like riding a bicycle, you don't forget how to pack your arm joint. Yeah, and just do a few repetitions. Think of a, of a wave coming in and a wave going out. You're sitting on the side of the shore, and a wave comes in, and the wave goes out. So it's fluid and yet protected. You're strong in your arms. Yes. Whee! And the hips come up, and the head follows. And notice what your arm is doing. I might want to point that out. Notice what your arms are doing. It's the same movement we've been doing since we were in fetal position. Yeah. Yeah, keep the fixated bent elbow. That's it. Uh-huh. Wonderful. And when you're ready, you've done enough reps, come on down. <laughs> Beautifully done. And let's actually come on to our bellies.
can make a little pillow for your head and just put your forehead down. And before we go into Dhanurasana, as you're just laying here, focus on the muscles around the spine, on either side of the spine, and let those muscles soften and move more laterally, like away from each other. So there's a softened quality. They, they tend to get ropey and firm, like very hard. Make them soft and lateral. From that place, bend both knees, reach back and hold the tops of the feet. Now, press your knees against the floor so the hip creases move away from the ground temporarily. Then draw the coccyx down until the tops of the hips flatten against the mat. Yeah, tailbone down. Then kick your feet back against your hands, lift your chest and come up. Soften the chest. And keep squeezing the shins in toward one another. And then exhale, softly release. Make the pillow again. Place your hands, come on to all fours. Okay, a couple more oppositional poses here. So you're going to lift your left leg up. Okay, take your right arm forward. Okay, slight bend in the elbow, plug it in. Now take it up and back, same position we've been doing. And now kick the foot back. So this is Ekapada Dhanudasana. So it's like bow pose, only with one leg, and we're not on our belly. Chin open, look forward. Kick the foot back against the hand. And feel the stretch in the front of the right deltoid and the bicep on the right arm. Mm-hmm. Exhale, release. Good job. Right leg up. Left arm forward. Pack the joint. Look at the hand. Take it back. Mm -hmm. Kick the foot back. Look up. If there's any low back crunchies, what do you do? Midsection back, right? Sternum down toward the navel. That will get rid of it. Hopefully. Excellent, and release. Okay, slightly harder to balance, possibly easier to do. Harder to balance, though. Shift your weight onto the left side, left hand, left knee. Reach back for the right. Yeah, so definitely easier back bend here, but harder to balance. Yeah, and if you need padding for your knee, please place a blanket or vertically fold your sticky mat to pad your knee more. Exhale, release. Left side, so shift to the right, pick up the left. Now try not to do the like peeing at the fire hydrant thing, right? We're still trying to keep our left hip square. So reach back, hold the foot and try to square the left hip as best you can. Yeah. Yeah, harder to balance. Beautifully done, exhale, release. Okay, flip onto your back. Option, <clears throat> actually not option, we're just gonna do Setu Bandha first. So, Place the hips on the floor, arch the low back, and squeeze the scapula, shoulder blades, toward one another. Dig the elbows down and make fists with your hands. Press your elbows against the floor and geyser your chest. Then press into the inner edges of the feet, lift the hips up, and keep the chin moving away from your throat, or from your chest, rather. Yeah. Then stretch the arms down onto the floor. Keep lifting the hips up. Mm. Exhale, softly release the hips back to the ground. 
All right, from here, place the hands for Urdhva Dhanurasana. Now the foundation on this one, the index fingers should be parallel to one another so you have good amount of external rotation in the arms. So from here, press the hands into the floor, press the feet into the floor, lift your hips up. Beautiful. From here, hips shift toward the knees, come up onto the head. Lift your heels off the floor. Walk your hands back toward your ears a little bit more. Now, take your chest toward the front of your mat and your armpits back so the arm bones plug into the sockets. Then, press into the feet, look at the floor, use your upper back to come all the way up. All the way up. Check your hands that your index fingers are parallel. Lower the heels. Breathing, smiling, tuck your chin, and come back down. Now feel, feel, feel the chest, feel where the bits of prana, life force, have entered. If your experience just now was not good, okay, so it could be wrists were hurting, or it could be the shoulder didn't feel good, or it could be the lower back was a bit tweaky. Okay, I'm gonna give you advice on all of those points, all right, to see if we can get a little improvement. If your wrists were hurting, you gotta check your foundation that the index fingers are parallel. If after trying that, still no good, next move to shoulders. Make sure that armpits are moving back. So if you look up here, okay, it's got to look like that before you go up. What does that remind you of? Pincha Mayurasana, huh? Okay, it's got to look like that. Then you go up, okay? That's for shoulders, that's for wrists. Lower back. Probably your feet are either turning out or your butt is squeezing too much, okay? Don't be an over butt squeezer, <laughs> okay? And by that, I mean, you want to have a toned butt, but you don't want to be tucking under, okay? You want to have a slight softness in the groins so the butt is hanging. Then when the tailbone scoops in, super strong. Learn to use your tailbone. That's a class I taught here that will help, okay, with all of that. Try again. So make sure your, uh, feet are, your feet are to the front. Here, just do a little spin, you guys. Yeah, do a little spinner. There you go. Okay, here we are. Hands in place. Hips up. Knees come past, or hips go toward the knees, I should say. Then bop up onto your head. Perfect. Make sure your feet are parallel. If you were in the lower back club, feet parallel. Heels come up off the floor. Okay, check your index fingers. Now's a great time because you're not totally weight-bearing yet. And then squeeze the armpits back. Yeah. Then chest up. Go up. Yes. Okay, if your back still doesn't feel so good, stretch your knees toward the front of the room, stretch your chest toward the back of the room. Right from the pelvis, split the energy in two directions. See if that relieves some of the kinking and the tension. Tuck your chin, exhale, release down. Did we have improvement in the various areas? Excellent, thank you for speaking, okay. Always love the feedback. <laughs> All right. Number three. We're going for it again. Hands in place. Hips up. Hips up and they go toward the knees. Then come onto your head. Lift the heels off the floor. Index fingers parallel. Arm hits back and chest forward, so that combination really locks and loads the arm bones. Then hips straight up, chest up, go up, 
and let's do five pumps of the chest toward the wall in front of you. Three, four, and five. Now, if and only if your forearms are vertical, put your head down on the floor and hands behind the head. Heels down. Dwi Paraviparita Dandasana. Armpits back, pump the chest forward. Armpits keep sucking back. Chest goes forward. Lift the head off the floor, pump even more. Head on the floor, hands on the floor. Go back up, wheel. Yeah, baby. Tuck the chin, exhale, lower. Who loves yoga? Okay. So that variation there where we go back down on the head, only if the forearms are perpendicular to the floor. Otherwise, it's kind of a waste of time. Okay, you just want to keep staying in the pose before it and getting the chest to open more. So feel, 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 feel. Roll to your right side and come up. So this class that we're doing right now is inspired by a little tutorial that I gave on Yoga Glow called Get a Grip. I don't know if anyone had Get a Grip. Um, and it was all about getting the grip for these poses where we take our, head, our foot behind our head and so forth. And um, I don't know, I did it in like 30 minutes or something, so it was complete kamikaze. So now we're luxuriating a little bit more into getting into these poses. So I'm going to do the same exact little demonstration I did in that tutorial for you guys. But to get that grip for poses like, there's so many of them, Ekapadaraja Kapotasana is one. That is also Natarajasana. Right? I'm totally being sloppy. Um, gosh, like even that pose that we just did. <coughs> right? There's that. There's Kapinjalasana, you know, like. Blah, blah, blah. Okay? The good news is. Straps are really handy, okay, when you don't have ridiculous flexibility, okay, you can always make a strap of the appropriate size, okay, so while you're watching, you can kind of be like threading, okay, this is like, you know, don't have the flexibility size right here, this is like I'm almost there, I just need a little extra inch, okay. Now, I'm going to show it to you without the strap, then I'll show it with. So when you lay on your side and you put your palm face up like you're holding a tray, okay, you're going to make a horseshoe shape with your hand. Can you see it? And then you're going to bend your knee as though you're the dog peeing at the fire hydrant, okay? But your palm rests face up on your, on your thigh and your shin. Then you reach and grab the foot. I'm going to do it from this side. Horseshoe, bend the knee until my foot comes to the horseshoe. That's the key. Then the horseshoe grabs the foot, the thumb specifically going to the baby toe mound right there, other fingers going around the big toe mound. Now there's a process once I get here. And that is to get bright. See it? And you guys have been doing this position all morning. OK? Then you're going to bend the foot to the shoulder so it's already pretty close. You're going to look at it. And if you get to here and you can swivel and graze your chest with your elbow, see I'm grazing my chest? You got it. And then you're right there. And you get out of it the same way. That's really tricky, too. That's important. 
to remember. So that becomes See? Get bright, bend it in, swivel, and turn. Okay? It also, you know, you can be done with both sides at once for um, Parangusta Danurasana. We'll do all of these. Okay? With a strap, the strap goes, let me just show it a little bit larger because that's where a lot of us will be. Okay, we'll put it around the foot, and it's the same thing, only you just grab, right? And then it's the same thing. Bright, bend, swivel, bring. Okay? So we all get to do it. That's the good news. We all get to do it because we have modifiers. We have accessories. Okay, these are not cheating. These are accessorizing your pose, okay? So let's try it. It's like a good handbag. <laughs> All right, so let's try it. We're going to lay on our right side. Okay, have your nifty strap ready. And those of you who know that you're pretty flexible already don't need to use it. Palm face up. Make your horseshoe hand, just, you know, as a formality. Okay, bend your knee and bring it towards you and see if, even without the strap first, see how much your hand can turn. So the, the horseshoe's holding the top of the foot. Hold the top of the foot. Turn palm face up. That's it. Thumb goes to the baby toe mound. Okay, and if you have that pretty well, chances are you can do it. If you don't think so, Grab your strap and wrap it, okay? But here we go. Lift the knee back and up, get bright. Okay, then bend the heel to the butt. Bring your foot towards your shoulder, yeah. And then, if you can graze the chest and swivel, look up, lift your chin, lift your chest, and swivel. Yeah, and release. Okay, determine what kind of length you need in your strap. Get yourself all figured out and we'll do the other side. And guess what? If it's not like super, like, you know, you have a really long strap, this is an amazing shoulder stretch, wouldn't you say? Yes. See? Who needs the full pose? Who needs it? Just get into how it feels. It doesn't matter whether you're doing it or not. Get into how it feels. Palm face up. Bend the knee, bring the foot to the horseshoe. Horseshoe holds the top of the foot. Thumb to the baby toe mound. Now bring the knee back behind you. Get bright, get bright, get bright, get bright. Then bend the foot to the shoulder. If you can swivel and graze the chest, head up, look back, and come slightly around. We're just starting with that. Excellent, and release. Take it to all fours now. So have your strap situation ready. Okay. Now, for this one, yes to the peeing at the fire hydrant. <laughs> okay, because we're shifting onto our right hand, right knee. Everybody do that. Palm face up. Rest it on your shin. Bend the knee into the chest to get the grip. Get a grip. Okay, now lift the knee way up behind you, way up. Kick it back like you're almost trying to straighten your leg. Then bend the heel to the butt. Close the knee joint. Suck the armpit back. Get ready to pivot and graze the chest so the elbow comes alongside the ear and then kick it up. That's it. And if you're using a strap, hold within the loop. Don't hold the side of the strap. Hold within the loop. Release. Second side. Okay. Is that feeling all right? You want to be feeling good. You don't want to be like, damn, I can't do this, and it's so hard, and it hurts my back. No, get to the place where this feels good by modifying. Here we are. Shift onto the left side. Lift up the knee like you're peeing at a fire hydrant. 
palm face up. I love saying that, don't I? Okay, bend the knee into the, into the chest so that the foot comes to the horseshoe, or the strap in this case. Then, knee up, knee up, knee up. That's it. Bend the foot toward the shoulder and swivel. <laughs> Good. Yeah, and release. All right. I will model the next one with strap. Okay. First pose, we have the strap nearby. We're not going to need it. Right knee forward, look back. Mermaid. Fixated elbow, armpit back. So once the arm bone's in the socket, then I can straighten the arm. Here. Let's do that. Ready? Right knee forward. <clears throat> Try not to sit onto your right hip, but square off. So we're now also getting a hip opener, which is great. Bend the back heel to the butt. Reach back with the left arm. So tuck that foot right into the elbow crease, if you can. Then shh, take the left arm up. That's it. Right arm. Slightly bent, fixate the elbow joint. Side body gets long, then suck it back. Take the arm alongside the ear, bend and hold. If you successfully have the grip here, it means you can do it without the strap when we do the full pose. If not, you're working on it, right? You're in the process of getting open, switch sides. And the good news is, because you're moving, because you're trying, you are getting closer every time you try, right? So this goes with any goal setting, any kind of process-oriented project you're working on. You have to take it in baby steps. It's not like, damn it, I didn't get it done. Forget about it. <laughs> Can you imagine? That's it. Chin open, yeah, head back. So right arm, or left arm rather, is fixated at the elbow joint, side of the body gets long, armpit back, then take the arm up, bend it, and hold. Mm -hmm. If you got the mermaid successfully, this is called mermaid or merman, depending on what you are, you should be able to get full Ekapadaraja Kapotasana release. Okay, and now we have our strap ready. And if you're doing a bare grip, it's helpful to turn the foot out because then you can grab it more easily, you see? If you're using a strap, hold within the loop. When you hold the end of the loop, or you, you hold here, it's a little out of control, okay? Control it. Okay, look at this. <laughs> see, so that's the getting bright part and the pelvis is coming forward like we did in ninja death pose, but I'm bright, see there? Then bend it in. Look back, hello foot. And then, shoo. And there's your pose. Try it. So find the length that's right for you. Keep looking back. Keep lifting your chin. Don't like bring the chin into the chest because that's the antithesis of the pose. That's not the pose. So that's why you want to leave your chin open. You look back at what you're doing. Look back at what you're doing. Yeah, so get the grip. Focus on the grip first. Yeah. That's the grip, remember? Right there. Horseshoe. Yep. Yeah. Get bright. Bend the foot in. Mm hmm. Trying to get the grip. I don't know. <laughs> Here. Look back. Palm face up. Look back. Look at it. There. You've got this. Yeah. Oh. Hello. Yeah. 
<laughs> Shift your weight onto your left hip so you're off the right hip. That's it. Pretty, pretty poses. If you get the low back weirdness, what do you do? <sighs> Waistline, midsection back. So don't keep going for the back bend. Midsection back. Let's do the left side. All right, so look back first. Look back and bend your knee. Bend your knee up. Okay, now, palm face up. Turn the hand out. Turn the hand palm face up. Mm -hmm. Grab the outer edge of the foot. Mm -hmm. Then get bright, but pelvis forward. Then bend the foot toward the shoulder. Once the foot is in toward the shoulder, graze the chest, swivel the arm up. Yep, perfect. Try not to sit into the left buttock. Yeah, open the knee wider. Goalie girl, there you go. That's it. Knee wider, wider, wider. Yeah, and then the other arm just comes up as, you know, just happens. Try not to sit into your right buttock. Come up off your right butt cheek. Yeah, there you go. Exhale and release. Okay. <laughs> Natarajasana. Natarajasana. You have a choice. You can do this standing, free, you know, lokma, no hands, or you could go over to a wall and put one hand up. All right? Either way, palm face up. Right here. Or... Here, okay, get bright, 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 bend in, swivel. Now the key with this one is that if you stay up here, you never really get into the pose and you could fall out of it. So pitch forward, kick up. To come out, that's the easiest, all right? The wall movement is here. This one you can really get into it because you're, ba you're balanced. See? Bright, bend, swivel. And right there. And it's kind of nice because you can see the wall you kind of feel more balanced. Try it. Get a wall if you wish, or do it free, free ma, no hands. Yeah, look back, yeah, that's it. Lift the leg high. Once you have the loop or you've gotten the grip, lift the leg high. Bend the foot toward the shoulder. Keep your chin open. Mm -hmm. Kick the foot back against the hand. Then swivel, 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 swivel. And up. Nice. Yeah, Brandon, beautiful pose. Yeah. Second side. That's it. So once you have your grip, get bright. Kick the foot behind you, get bright. Stretch the arm, then bend the foot toward the shoulder. Now keep yourself bright, swivel up. Keep your chin open, swivel up. And then as you're shifting, you're squaring off your hips to the center, other arm comes up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> try it again. I was going to try to connect it. <laughs> nice. And I bet you can get your foot because you did it on the ground. Maybe. <laughs> I think so. All right. Well done, everybody.
All right, let's stop doing that one. Okay, Parangusta Danurasana. It's the same thing. Right? Bend in. See how my chin stays up the whole time? Swivel. Bend and release. Okay? Now, you need two straps for this one, right? Or you can put socks on. If you have, we're not in sock weather today, but if you are in sock weather, you can put socks on, pick up the edges, and do the same thing, okay? Give it a little try, even if you just do one side at a time from here and you let yourself come onto your belly. Even if you just do that with the strap on each side, give it a go. Okay? Try that. So if you're doing both sides at once, you're reaching back with your thumbs face up like this. So go on your tummy, look forward like you're Superman or Superwoman, okay? Both hands back at the same time. To me, it's easier. Yeah, both hands back, taking the grip. Yeah, you got it on that side. You got it. You got it. Yeah, yeah. Then kick the feet back, get bright. So this is different than baby Dhanurasana. This is like full Dhanurasana. Mm -hmm. not happening. Get bright. Is this like totally not happening? It's not easy. So the grip, it's harder because you're not able to do the whole knee thing anymore, right? So you have to just remember what it feels like. See, I'm here, and then I got to reach over to here. And see, one way of doing it is I get this side because you all can get this side, especially with a strap, you can. And then you can move your knee. Do you see how I move my knee this way? I'm moving it into the center in order to get the other side. It's awkward. Then I bring my knee back, and I've got both. Do you see that? Did anyone get that? <laughs> okay, again. So I get the first side because that's... I can open the knee and get it, right? I got it. Now I'm going to turn and get this side. Then I'm going to bring the knee back, bring the knee back, bring the knee back, and I got both sides. Then lift up, bend. This may or may not happen, but we're good with that. Yes, yes, that was it. Okay. That was, that's one of the hardest ones, and I threw it in there just to see, <laughs> just to see. Okay. Last one. Now, Kapinjalasana is also an option that's coming from Vashistasana into it, but it takes so much balance. It takes wall, so I think we'll, we'll um, shelf that one for now. But one that's really fun that you guys have been very close to doing actually already today is you come in, grab, lift up, bend in, get onto your tummy. And then you can creep up the other arm like this until you get your foot or the strap. And then pitch forward. Sometimes you can scooch in a little. <laughs> okay? I don't know what to call it, but I call it supta natarajasana. Downward facing natarajasana or something. 
it's fun and it feels really nice on the throat and the chest. You can do it with a strap too, that's the beauty. Try it. Try, try, try. This will be our grand finale. And I recommend if you have the luxury of watching this at home and you really want to go for it, pause and try Kapinjalasana, which is the, the Vashistasana variation. Total peeing at the fire hydrant, you know, coming into the same exact position, only in Vashistasana. Highly recommend pausing and giving that a go while you're this warm. Okay. And then you can come back and do Supta Natarajasana. Yeah. So the back leg stays tucked under, helps you, helps you kind of get some traction there. Nice, Brandon. That's it. And kick the foot back against the hands. And you can experiment with dropping a knee down, dropping your um, back leg down to kind of scooch in a little closer to try to get onto your tummy. That's it, Caitlin's got it. Yeah. Go girl, that's it. And then the knee comes off the floor to give you that extra push onto your tummy. Yeah. Second side. This looks great. Lift your chin up. Keep that. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> Super good. All right. And there was a nice amount of grunting and moaning. And so I know that your body's got some extra prana in there. Yeah, chin open. Rest down when you're done. Make a pillow for your head. Pretty girl. Conk. <laughs> Place the hands by your chest and push back to Balasana, child's pose. Stretch your arms forward, spread out your fingers, tuck your toes under, push back out of Mukha Svanasana, down dog. Mm. So whenever you're in a class and you're kind of out of your comfort zone, I hope that this practice has encouraged you to feel really solid and empowered using props modifying where you need to, and being content, really, with, with where you're at. Just simply being content with being present to how it feels, rather than, damn it, I can't do it. I want to go deeper. The I want to go deeper are longings that we can have, and that's healthy, too. But you have to be able to do both. Have the longing, but also be content. Well done. Walk your feet halfway up your mat. Sit down. Lay on the back with your knees into your chest. Tip your sit bones toward the floor. And then gently stretch the legs all the way out because it's time for Shavasana. 
palms face up. Feel prana pulsing through every part of the body as it's been moved and stretched and explored. Start to deepen the breath and wiggle the toes and the fingers. And then gradually but gently hug the knees into the chest, stretch the arms whichever way feels appropriate for you. And make your way slowly over onto your right side. And then use the strength of your arms to make your way back up to a seated position. Bring your palms together in front of the heart. And with appreciation for our process, for our presence, for the presence of all of our loved ones in our lives, who we do this practice for in many ways, to serve, chant the sound of Om one time. Full deep breath. Oh.